So in this example, guys, before we can figure out what theta and beta are, let's draw some triangles here, right? So we have sine of theta is negative 4 or 5, where secant is less than 0. So hopefully this is a little bit more familiar to you guys than when we first learned it. We know if secant is negative, then it has to be in the second and the fourth quadrant. Yes, 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 yes. Right? However, if sine is negative, then that has to be in the third and the fourth quadrant. So the only triangle that fits is down here. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, no, say no. OK, and then just remember, guys, we always draw it with the central angle, which is technically a reference angle, and then perpendicular to the 90 degrees. So we have negative 4 and 5. We could use the Pythagorean theorem if we wanted to, or we could, reckon, or we could remember that this is a Pythagorean triple, and that's a 3. But notice that since it's in the third quadrant, that is also a negative 3. Be careful with that. That was a lot of mistakes that people made, if you guys remember the quiz and test we took. People forgot those signs. Um, now let's go and do beta. That's theta. OK. So beta is um, cosine of 1 third, where tangent is positive. Tangent is positive in the first and the fourth quadrants. Well, since cosine is also you know, adjacent, or that's positive, then I know it's going to be in the first quadrant. So this is 1, that's 3. And there I could use the Pythagorean theorem to go ahead and figure this out, which would be square root of 8, which is the same thing as 2 square root of 2. Not 2.8284271, which would be the decimal approximation, which we don't want to use, right? We'd want to use the square root of 8, or 2 square root of 2. I always want to use the simplified version. But this one would be a little bit. All right, so now let's go ahead and use our formula. So tangent of theta minus beta is uh, no, I forgot. Tangent of tangent of theta minus tangent of beta all over one plus tangent of theta times tangent of beta. Okay, so if we're going to do the uh, tangent of theta plus beta. That's now going to look like this, tangent of theta. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, right? Which is a positive 4 thirds. Tangent of beta, oops, I forgot to write in the beta. Remember, we're using that right angle, is going to be square root of, or 2 square root of 2. I'm just going to put this in parentheses. And then it's going to be 1 plus uh, 4 thirds times 2 square root of 2. Okay, now again in this example, guys, we have a complex fraction, right? So we can simplify this. Yes, yes, no, no. So we can multiply by 3 over 3. And make sure you apply distributive property. Don't want to be that student. And now when we apply distributive property here, we get 4 minus 6 square root of 2 all over a 3 plus 8 square root of 2. And then, obviously, guys, if you, want, if you needed to simplify this further, you would go ahead and rationalize the denominator. I'm just going to stop here, because um, if you were to have a problem like this, your rationalized denominator would be like a simple one like we did in class, like nothing like this number. You could go and do it, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to say this would be like on a free response question, we'd be okay from there. Okay. Huh? Eight. What? What do you mean? Yeah. I do multiply the three times this quantity. So the three is divided out, so it's just four times two. These are multiplied by each other. This is like three things multiplied by each other. right? You don't apply distributive property across the product. You only apply distributive property across the addition. Right? This is written, same thing like 2 times 3 times 4. You don't multiply the 4 times 2 and the 3. This is 4 times 2 and then times 3, right? So you don't apply distributive property there. You just multiply them. Yes?
But the main important thing, the main part on that problem, guys, is 